Okay. So you are uh, you are out there um, working on the new Snoo album. It's Willie Bass reporting live at Total Access Recording in Redondo Beach, California. Yes. I'm in the studio with Snoo and Ken Scott, Bobby Orsinski, and uh, we're rocking it hard here. And uh, now you're, you're doing all the bass on this album. I'm doing most of the bass. We've got Paul Ill from uh, Bill Ward and uh, Linda Perry's band is going to play on a couple of songs as well. Me and Paul go way back, and he's a great friend of Bobby's, and I'm just honored to be in great company and playing some good heavy metal rock and roll. How'd you get involved with the band? I've known Curtis, the lead singer. Uh, he actually does my graphics. I've known him for 20 years. Okay. And uh, are you planning on touring with Snoo, or do you have your own tour plans? Well, I have I have my own tour, but uh, I'm looking to bring uh, Snoo out on the road with me okay. on some dates, uh, probably after the album is mixed, and uh, we're we're looking at blowing up your town. <laughs> right now, uh, what is the name of your tour, and and what will you be playing on it? Well, my my tour is called uh, Feed America Dash Now dot okay. org, and we're going all over North America. Uh, you know, uh, feeding the hungry, and uh, it's just basically Americans helping fellow Americans. Okay. We got a couple, couple of dates in Canada as well. Great. Where, where, uh, where so? We're playing in Toronto at the Rock Pile, and also in Cambridge at Five One Five Concert Club. Well, I hope you can make it out to uh, to Montreal as well. I, you know, I hadn't really thought about it. We're uh, we were up in Michigan. I'm going to be playing the Temple Theater in Saginaw and uh, the Token Lounge in Detroit. So I thought, well, why not pop over into Canada and, and hit those areas as well? Because I, you know, I played there. I played there in January, February last year with George Lynch. Right. We did did 21 shows with Lynch Mob last year. Wow. <laughs> Actually, in January. Oh, you're getting a call. <laughs> Aren't live interviews fun? Now, um. Uh, what was I? What, what is the concept behind the uh, the tour now? Are, are people supposed to bring out perishable or non-perishable goods, or is it to just the 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 door goes to to a local charity? What's what's the concept? Well, basically, this is uh, concerts to end hunger. Okay. So we just want to see people bring out non-perishable canned goods. Okay. Uh, and you get a discount admission for bringing canned goods. Okay. And, and every a hundred percent of everything, the money, the donations, the canned goods go directly to the nearest food bank to the club, to each club. Okay, great. That's a, that's a great concept. And um, let me just go back to Snoo for a second. They're working with Ken Scott on this album. Am I correct? Yes. And he's been involved with, boy, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Beatles and Hendrix and Missing Persons and what else? Well, I don't think he did Hendrix. Get, uh, oh. Bobby, Bobby, did, Bobby worked with some Hendrix stuff. Okay. Um, I knew there was uh, Hendrix in there somewhere. Ken Ken has done uh, Pink Floyd. Wow. D David Bowie. Elton John. Elton, Elton John. Wow. And how did he uh, get involved in the project? I think Curtis can answer that. The lead singer. There he is. Hey, what's going on? Hello, hello. How are you? Brave words and bloody knuckles. You gotta yeah. love that. Yeah, we were thrilled to have Ken in on this. He's uh, he's really good friends with our producer Bobby Osinski. So okay. Uh, Bobby brought him in on this, and he's waiting in the next room for us to start recording any second now. So. Oh, that's great. And, yeah. and uh, what does he bring to the table in terms of his experience? Oh, just uh, this guy knows how to record like nobody you've ever known. Oh, the, the, the sounds are amazing. It's <laughs> absolutely yeah. incredible this, sounding. This album is going to be the best thing we've ever done, and God, I mean, it's just dynamic. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. By the way, you just noticed the, the little one walked in. I had to shoo her away. Now, um, Will, you're uh, also going to be at the Playboy Mansion soon. Yes, we're doing a rock and roll fantasy camp. Uh, and this one is at the Playboy Mansion. Uh, they're taping right now uh, the New York set segment, which features Vince Neil and Lita Ford. But the one in Hollywood at the Playboy Mansion features Paul Stanley, myself, Niels Lofgren, and um, I George believe Lynch. George Lynch, yeah. 
And did you mention uh, Billy Sheehan? Is he there or is that not confirmed yet? Mr. Sheehan, Mr. Big. Yeah. Will be. So I'm honored to, to uh, you know, because B- Billy uh, uh, employed one of my guitar players, Mitch Perry, in his band right. um, called Talus. And uh, we've never really hung out, so it'll be great to hang out with him and get to know him. Will there be some bass dueling going on? Uh, well, you know, Ru- uh, Ru- Rudy Sarzo is going to be there too, so it's going to be a, a good bass. It'll be a good bass weekend. <laughs> wow! No now, pun intended, no, Willie. <laughs> Willie Bass. Now, back in the days, you hung out with all these guys, the the, the Dawkin guys and, and the Rack guys and the the '80s guys, right? Well, George was actually in my band before he was in Dawkin. It's just like it's just like Slash was in my band before he was in uh, Guns N' Roses. Yeah, you know, people keep forgetting that, myself included just now. Uh, how was it working with them back then? And, and were you happy for their success when they, when they moved on to the other bands? Or were you sort of like, hey, why'd you leave me? Well, I was just telling Snoo about it. Um, I'm on page 69, <laughs> appropriately so, uh, <laughs> in Duff's new book. Right. It's so easy. And uh, he shares in the book that, that they thought I was pissed off that they stole Slash out of the band. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious, man. But, you know, it, it wouldn't have been Guns N' Roses without Slash. So, you know, it, it's just uh, that serpentipity thing and uh, just a special situation. I'm just glad to be where I was and where I am today. It's, it was all just meant to be the way it was. It's, I think everything is perfect the way it is. It is now. When you were back in the 80s, you, I mean, you, you sort of were on the periphery of all these bands, or you, you had them in your band like you just mentioned, but you didn't achieve the same success. What happened? Well, you know, I was focused on Sunset Strip, right. and I didn't realize that my record label, Enigma Records, had released the record worldwide until I started to get letters from Belgium wow. and uh, Japan, and then I realized that... It was, you know, the scope is the whole world and not just Hollywood and the Sunset Strip. But, you know, I mean, I, I was in the Texas Boys Choir. I, right. I sang opera for, for between 10 and 15. We won two Grammy Awards. So, you know, I mean, I, I've considered myself always successful. I mean, I've, sure. I, I've, I came to L.A. and met my mentors. I worked with Buddy Miles and lived with him for three years. He was Hendrix's drummer. So... You know, I worked with Gary Kilgren, who was the owner of the record plant, who was uh, was a co-producer on the first Jimi Hendrix album. He built studios for Stevie Wonder, Sly, Jimi Hendrix. Wow. Uh, you know, it was a hell of a, a, a college, like hanging out with Gary Kilgren every day was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Enig- Enigma Records, which is sort of an enigma for me to say. Uh, they, were, <laughs> they were a great independent label that... that really showed, you know, led the way for, for rock music. Well, yeah, Enigma and Metal Blade were pioneers. They signed everything that had a pulse, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. it worked. <laughs> it worked really well. And, uh, and they sold the company off for $53 million, so <laughs> I would say that it worked. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a bad gig. And then they're the first ones who, who gave Poison any uh, time of day also, which was interesting. Well, yeah, that was, you know, my manager was Vicki Hamilton, and Vicki Hamilton shopped everybody. She shopped Motley Crue. She shopped uh, Poison, uh, Guns N' Roses, Faster Pussycat. That's right. Uh, you know, was we, were, we, we didn't know at the time, but it was really an important part of Hollywood and great music, that whole era. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hold on a sec. <laughs> 